Hello, hello! Welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons, my British Rail critics, and of course, my underwater train finders. You are the reason why this content remains panicking! Everybody panic! I don't know what we're panicking about, but we're gonna panic! Do it! Now! And today, we are going to discuss an incident where panic seemed to be the appropriate reaction to the situation. This is the story of the Battle of Los Angeles. Now perhaps some of you were slightly confused because, wait, was there ever a battle in Los Angeles? Well, no, certainly not in World War II, but for a while we thought there was one. It was the evening of February 24th, 1942. And things were, well, concerning in America. Pearl Harbor had just happened two and a half months prior, and we were in the middle of mobilizing to enter World War II. People's friends and families were being shipped all over the place across the world, over the Atlantic, and starting the war to push the advancing Japanese back over in the Pacific. Now, the Japanese had already proven that they were totally willing to attack American soil, and the notion of them possibly finding a way to attack continental United States was not something that the military didn't consider. Defensive batteries and anti-air guns were placed up and down the west coast, including many fortifications near major cities, where bombing would likely be focused. Now, it's worth mentioning that in realistic terms, Japan never managed to actually make a real attack on the mainland United States. There were a few small cases. One of their submarines managed to fire off a few rounds at one point, and they had these balloons that were known as Fugos, and they were designed to sail quietly through the air and drop ordnance on the United States. They never really did much, though, as by their nature, they were completely inaccurate. I might go into more detail involving those two cases sometime later, but the point is that Japan never really had much of an opportunity to attack the continental United States on the same scale that it had attacked Pearl Harbor. But consider the situation, again, two and a half months after Pearl Harbor was attacked. People were alarmed, scared. That attack had proven that it can, in fact, happen here. And the notion that we were now involved in a global conflict did no one's paranoia any favors. And it definitely didn't help when at about 7.18 p.m., the Los Angeles air raid sirens started blaring. However, this alert was lifted at about 10.23 p.m. Everyone kind of calmed down. Maybe it was a false alarm. Nope. Military radar picked up an unidentified object about 120 miles west of Los Angeles. The radar began to show multiple targets by some sources, and they were moving closer and closer to LA. At about 2.15 a.m., the anti-aircraft batteries were alerted, and they were put to green alert, ready to fire. At 2.21, a blackout of the entire city was ordered, and the use of floodlights was authorized. At 2.43 a.m., planes were reported near Long Beach, and a few minutes after that, a coast artillery colonel spotted, as he said, about 25 planes at 12,000 feet over Los Angeles. At about 3.06 a.m., a balloon that was carrying a red flare was seen over Santa Monica, and four batteries of anti-aircraft artillery opened fire. The city was thrown into chaos. People, of course, freaked out, thinking that they were being bombed. The anti-aircraft guns continued to blare for about an hour, until finally, after all of that, things went silent. In the end, by some reports, five civilians died during this. No, not from enemy action. Three were killed panicking in traffic accidents, and two suffered heart attacks. But the truth was, there was never any enemy. At all. The anti-aircraft guns had been shooting at absolutely nothing. Despite some people insisting that they saw the planes, there was no evidence that there was any enemy aircraft ever in the area. In fact, after the war, Japan confirmed that they have no record of their aircraft ever being over Los Angeles. The Navy Secretary Frank Knox said, As far as he knows, the whole raid was a false alarm. It could be attributed to jittery nerves. That seems the most likely explanation. After all, war had just been declared, and even many of the servicemen that were responsible for the anti-aircraft guns were pretty green. They were new. Most would have had no real combat experience at all. And with the air raid sirens blaring, and the reports that there are enemy aircraft in the air, when one fired, well, they all fired. The fact that it was a panic seems to be supported by the many reports of what exactly was seen on that night. Whether they're planes or balloons, 
They consisted of all possible sizes, varying wildly between altitudes and speeds. Some were said to be going very slow, and others over 200 miles per hour. These reports don't line up in any way, implying the whole thing to be just that, a mass panic. The 1,440 rounds that were fired caused what are known as shell bursts. The shell bursts were caught by the searchlights, and in the night sky may have looked like enemy planes or balloons. It would have been very confusing, especially for someone who was new to combat. Some conspiracy theorists like to say that, no, oh, see, it was a UFO, man. It was the aliens. They were showing up to sit there and do nothing and then leave again. But yeah, man, I, I, I know it was aliens, I'm telling you. It was really, it definitely wasn't that. I promise you, it was not that, okay? This picture often gets cited as proof that it was some kind of object, but this is clearly just an optical illusion. It just looks brighter there because all the searchlights are crossed over with each other. But what about that radar? I mean, they said they saw something, right? I mean, they wouldn't have sounded an alarm if they didn't really think that there was an incoming unknown. Well, there's two things to consider with that. For one thing, radar was still pretty new. And one of the reasons why Pearl Harbor was so devastating is that even though the Japanese aircraft appeared on the radar, the Navy at the time actually assumed that it was a malfunction in most cases, not believing that an attack on such a massive scale would be possible, or that Japan would willingly do that. They did. That incident being so recent, it's not unfair to assume that if anything unknown appeared on the radar, the commanding officers would be way more willing to sound an alarm just in case. Better safe than sorry. Even if it did wind up turning out to be a malfunction, at least if they sounded the alarm, had it not been a malfunction, they would have been ready for an attack. But, it may not have actually been a malfunction. The radar has probably detected something, and this explanation comes with a very specific article that's attributed to the veteran Los Angeles newsman, Matt Weinstock. He interviewed a man who said he worked on one of the anti-aircraft batteries. And that man had a pretty dumb explanation for what had happened. And not dumb as in extraterrestrials, dumb as in, oh my god, it really was just that. The man explains that when they were setting up coastal defenses, one of their new radar stations was set up near Santa Monica. The crew at that station tried really hard to get some allied aircraft to fly by just so they could test the system. But in the chaos of the opening stages of World War II, this request was ignored completely. So, a different solution to test it came up when one of them brought in a bag of nickel balloons. They filled them with hydrogen and attached metal wires to them and just let them go. They caught on the offshore breeze and the balloons actually appeared on radar. This proved to them that it worked, but they traveled a good distance offshore and to the south. And doing this, it's possible, if not likely, that the nightly offshore breeze would have pushed the balloons back towards coastal cities. This would have caused them to appear on other radar station screens, and they would not have been aware that they were just balloons used to test a system, not actual enemy planes. To them, it looked like that, though. And that's why the alert sounded, and the anti-aircraft gunners started firing. This explanation has never actually been confirmed, but it does seem pretty likely, to be brutally honest. It probably was just a simple radar malfunction, or perhaps these balloons that were meant specifically to appear on a radar station screen, that led to a mass panic, both among the military personnel and the general populace of Los Angeles. It's an unfortunate tale, as again, it's said that five people actually died for literally no reason, but it was the early stages of World War II for America, and we were a little freaked out. I think everyone was, at least in the beginning. And with that, a special thank you goes out to all my underwater train finders. Thomas Ward, Lord Captain Von Thrust III, Sumdue 267, Brightline Blue, Joshua Long, Ohio Trucker 1, Roll Hudson 2860, Lord Hoth 444, Arthur Roy, Benjamin Owens, Panzer Kitsun 131-232, Mr. Black Rose Tribal Typhoon, Master of None, Josh Johnson, and Lock Kraken. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.